Hey everybody, my name's Derek and this is Fatal RPM. So this video is actually kind of funny. It took quite a while to get set up in everything, but more or less the reason why I held off on doing this for quite a while is one, because of the coronavirus. That caused a lot of issues at the beginning of the year, as well as my progress with this car overall. I really didn't want to do any modifications on it until I could get some of the core issues figured out with the car, but we're more or less getting that all figured out in one place. So in order to make this video possible, actually, I partner with Arm Motorsports. For this particular video, I got the front mount intercooler. We have the seven and a half inch front mount intercooler in gold, which is absolutely beautiful. We also have the new uh, intercooler pipes going to it. Now, when I originally were talking to them, they were about to come out with their 1K, which is their 1000 cubic centimeter displacement. It's a big boy intercooler pretty much i i forget the exact terminology but it's a it's a big boy intercooler so if you're really pushing power that's the intercooler that you're going to want but other than like intercoolers and stuff they have down pipes they have the inlet relocation kit which will allow you to move your inlets from the driver side over to the passenger side where the turbos are which has a myriad of advantages in its own however everything that i've seen from them so far especially with the intercooler that i got it seems like it's all really good condition. This video will be a testament to that, honestly. Uh, well, not necessarily this video, but future will be. So once again, I do want to thank Arm Motorsports for hooking me up with this partnership. And it seems like it's going to be relatively simple to get installed. This particular one is one of the models where you don't have to take off the front bumper in order to put it in. We'll, we'll see about that. I don't know if I want to struggle. I'm one for not making more work for myself than I need. So if I can get it in there without it, fine. But at that first sight of having some issues, that bumper's coming right off. But let's go ahead and get the car jacked up because we do need to get out, uh, get out, get under the car and get the old intercooler out. So let's go ahead and get into that. All right. So once we have the car jacked up, we're going to have to get under. And there's a couple pieces of hardware we have to get out in order to get this intercooler out so so like I said I'm doing other stuff on the car so you'll see that there's some stuff missing here that doesn't need to be missing ie tires but right here we have the first screw and we have the other one over here on this side of course we're gonna want to disconnect the pipes now, Arm says we don't have to remove the bumper for this, but if it starts getting a little too difficult or if I'm getting like running out of space, then we're definitely going to be pulling this bumper. Other than that, the fittings on the intercooler are the OE fittings, so you can still reuse the clips and everything, so you don't have to worry about boost leaks. But they also sent me upgraded uh, tubes. So we're actually going to be getting rid of these ones here, these plastic ones, and we're going to be upgrading to the silicone ones. So let's start to get this hardware out, and I'll give you an update once we get that out. All right, so I've gone ahead and released the intercooler from below, just with those two screws, and there's a couple clips keeping it onto the fan trout. But after I did that, I went ahead, used my pry bar to wiggle the pipes out of the way. However, I am going to be taking out my charge pipe. I've already loosened my fan right here. And the primary reason I'm going to be doing that is just to give myself a little bit of wiggle room to be able to wiggle it out of there, quite literally. Literally, And the reason why I'm doing the charge pipe is because that's so much easier to get to than the inlets right here, especially with that being, <clears throat> especially with that being a aluminum pipe. I don't know why my voice cracked right there. Uh, so all I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and get this thing out of the way, pull the first cone, and then pull out the charge pipe. These are just a couple of T25s, so I'm going to go ahead and get this stuff out and get right back to you guys. Alright, so actually taking that charge pipe off made my life a lot easier. We got the freed up space up top. Now it's time for the moment of truth. All you have to do is just push it forward. What I did is I just put my thumb on here and pushed it forward. This is a little clip that goes in this hole. And all you got to do is apply a little forward pressure and it will drop down. 
and then you just go ahead and slide it down. So I took off the little clips for this guy. You don't have to do these, you just have to do these ones here for the fan and this one on either side. And pretty much all you gotta do is, I did it with some pliers, but you just go ahead. This guy here goes in this hole that that's sitting in, and then this part here goes right in between these channels, so you wanna kinda grab it like that, pull it down and twist it that way. But after you do that, it'll be free, and we can go ahead and pull it down, so I'm on the truth. Oh God. Oh, oh my God, it's so tiny. <laughs> this thing is so small. Like, I have huge hands, but it's like, what, like four inches across? And it's not very tall. It's like a little square. Actually, it's a little taller than it is wide, but, or deep, but more or less, this is the stock intercooler that we have in here. And let's uh, kind of see all the dirt and stuff that's been kind of building up over the years. See, it's 2008, so it's 2020 now, so 12 year old car. 12 years of dirt and grime and disgustingness. So <laughs> let's go ahead and we're gonna go and grab the other one. So you can see we have this compared to, this is the beautiful ARM seven inch intercooler. Like I said, it has the OE fittings there, so you don't have to worry about anything aftermarket in that case, other than just replacing the intercooler itself. This is the OE one. So we have almost twice the depth compared to the two, uh, or comparing the two here. So front to front comes up to about this point. So it was right here. So yeah, about double the thickness of the OE one. Unfortunate part is there are no type of mounting surfaces on the bottom to keep air from going under the intercooler like this one does. It has a little lip on the front. But other than that, like I said, with these OE clips, I am gonna be reusing the aftermark or the OEM clips on one side, but not on the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these here on this. And we're gonna be using the arm uh, charge pipe, silicone charge pipe adapter for this on this side, or the, the hose upgrades, the front mount intercooler hose upgrades for the charge pipe side. So the good thing is it does have these little clips here, or I don't know what to call these, these little channels up front so that the fan trowel can go ahead and slip into it. But the main reason why I want to do this is just so we could see, get a visual representation of like the height difference between the two. Looks like they're about the same height. Uh, but like I said, it's double the depth. So we're gonna have to trim out more or less the entirety of the inside of the little plastic shroud there, just so we can actually get this in there. So that's good to know and see. So let's go ahead and cut those pieces out of the bumper, why don't we? All right, so now that we're back here at the car, I started trying to take out this grill here, but it has a whole bunch of clips to go around the inside, but we do need to cut out the little fins on the inside before we can actually start taking anything out, it looks like. So what we're actually gonna be cutting out to get this uh, intercooler to fit in here, it's, it's really simple actually. There's just two little, almost like fins on the inside. I'm not exactly sure what they are. So you can see them right here actually. We're gonna be cutting this guy out and the one out on the other side. And we should be able to fit it in here no problem. If not, we might have to trim this little piece of plastic as well, but I'm pretty sure we'll be able to get this in here without doing that. But let's, uh, let's start trimming Let's try and see if we can get these things out first, and then we'll go from there. All right, so some progress has been made, and long story short, take off the bumper. I know they say you can do it without taking off the, there's a big ass rock in here, look at that. <laughs> I know they say you can do it without taking off the bumper, but honestly, you will make your life 10 times easier by taking it off. 
And actually, now that I think about it, they may have said that about the five inch, not about the seven inch. But the reason why is because you have to cut it off right here, kind of. And over here, I'm still test fitting it right now to see exactly how much I need to trim off. But I've been kind of cutting and trimming slowly. And I think I'm right about where I need to get it in. So the only other thing I would recommend is whenever you go to install these, since it's not going to be the easiest thing to install because there's nothing for you to actually put anything on. Uh, what I would say is do it old jam nut style. And what that means is take your threaded side that's going to actually have the nut threading onto it, put one on, and then put the other one on behind it and make sure they're tight against each other. And that'll give you something to actually screw this in with. So you're not fighting with it with like a pair of pliers screwing up the threads or anything. So we're gonna go ahead and get this fitted. I'm pretty sure we're at the good, I, I'm pretty sure I'm in a good place. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and check it out. I'm just putting this thing in. I want a radiator. Nope, intercooler. It's not like I'm holding this heavy ass chunk of metal over my head. You know, go ahead, stop having a conversation with me. Thanks. I think it looks good. Cool beans. All right, time to put everything back. Oh. One thing I forgot to say, you don't have to do this, especially not if you're taking off the bumper, but I did take out the uh, fan housing and it's really simple. Uh, on automatics, you have one extra screw, but other than that, there's just a screw that sits right in here uh, that holds the fan in. Then you have a plug up top right here. So that would be on the driver's side. Have the plug here. Like I said, that screw there and automatics there's I think it's something for the AC, but it screws in right there. Just that one screw and it comes right out. But time to put this back in. <laughs> so after remembering how much I hate the OE fittings on the outlet, I just took the angle grinder to it real quick, cut it off. So I don't have to deal with that and I'm gonna deal with this. So we're gonna go ahead and install this. Don't mind the mess. One of the things I took off still had some fluid in it. So it just leaked a little bit, but I'm just gonna go ahead and get all this set back up. It's literally just the reverse of what I did before. So I'll get back to you when it's fully installed. But however, I do have the bumper back on and I think it looks good. I like it. So the next thing for the downpipe, like I said, they did send me the silicone charge pipe as well as the outlet. So we went ahead and got that one installed. Uh, so next thing we gotta do for this guy, is we just want to identify where the little curve is and we have it right there. That's going to be at top because it has to go right past that little pulley there. Is it, actually, is that a pulley? Nope, that's our AC condenser. So what we're going to do is I already have this out of the way to make my life easier because you can see it is severely in the way. So if you are doing this, you're either going to have to fish it through the bottom if you don't want to take this off. But like I said, I was doing other things. So I already drained my coolant. So we went ahead and popped this guy off. And of course it wants to stay on here now. So we get, went ahead and got that off. And now all we're gonna do is just fish this down here. Maybe, maybe not. I might have to still do it from the bottom. So we can see it's clearing on both sides. So, wait, no it's not, it's hitting hose. So I'm gonna go under and pull it down. So the issue I'm actually having is this thing keeps sliding off while I'm trying to put this on. And it's just, it's like not just, it's just not having it. All right, so I finally got it on. And ultimately what ended up saving everything was putting this can of WD-40 right there. Cause that was able to let it, let me hold it forward and hold that on. Because every time I would tighten this, either the band would want to slide off or the collar itself would want to slide off. 
So in order to solve that, I put the can right here after pushing the whole charge pipe forward. And then I was able to hold the band and the collar in place while I tightened that down. So that's all good, that's all set. Intercool is finally installed. So let's, uh, let's, let's get the car down on the ground. All right, and now that we get the car down and the intercooler installed completely, pipes checked, as you can see there, got a brand new grill on her. Uh, we just need to go ahead and check the, not check, but update the map, the tune, the map, the tune. We gotta go ahead and update the tune. All right, so we got MHD right there loaded up. Go ahead and put the car's ignition on. All we're going to do is we're going to go over here to tune, flash map, V8, which is the current one. And what I had on there before was the stage two, and we're going to go over to stage two plus. All right, so we got 95. So we're going to go ahead and flash this. We have the auto. We're going to, there you go. Contacting. So we're going to go ahead and customize options real quick. I want to see what we got. So linear throttle, I had issues with that before. Don't want to leave any of that. We don't have catted down pipes. Exhaust barbell, let's go ahead and turn that on. And we'll leave it so... Ooh, did not mean to turn that up. Let's put that at uh, 2400. We'll go ahead and leave it... We'll set aggressiveness. Set it to medium. Cold start, noise reduction, no. Enable in sand still, that's fine. Two and a half seconds in sport, half a second. Let's bump that up to one second base. All right. So we got all that there, power traction, blah, 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 blah. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go back. Map right. Battery chargers recommended. That's mainly for the initial install because that can take quite a while, but this one should only take like a minute or two, so we should be good. Because I do have the V7 stage two map on here, like I already said. But this should go ahead and just give us a nice little power bump. So let's uh let's take this around after this is done. Alright, so long story short, I took it around and I had a boost leak, so I couldn't really test much of anything. I do have another part two coming out, or another video, a part two to this video coming out where we replace the charge pipe. Now, I replace it because initially, you'd think after all the issues that I had actually putting that thing back on there, that there'd be a boost leak there. That was not the case. After some problem solving, I found out what the actual issue, what the actual issue was, so that video will be coming up next. Other than that, like always, go ahead and hit that like button down below if you like the video. It helps out a lot more than you know. If you want to get any notifications from me whenever I drop a new video for my 300ZX or the 335, like in this video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon right next to it so that you do get those notifications. But as always, thank you for watching the video once again. Peace out. I'll see you next one.